Hi everyone, my name is Ruben Henares and today I'd like to show you a small tool that I made to improve the workflow of creating static meshes inside of 3ds Max for Unreal Engine 4. So first of all I'm going to show you how to install the tool. Um, it's pretty simple, you can find the link in the description of this video. You're going to get a zip like this one, so all you want to do is just go to your C drive, to your users folder, name of your user, uh, app data, local, Autodesk, 3ds Max, whatever version you're using, ENU, just grab it and extract it here, uh, just like that. Um, then open up 3ds Max, and just like any other script, just go to your customize, custom user interface. You can you can decide if you want to create a, oh, wait a minute, oh, there we go. Uh, you can decide if you want to, to create a keyboard shortcut or a toolbar or to a menu or whatever. In my case, I already went ahead and created um, a toolbar for it. Uh, so just under category, you will find a category called Ruben Honoris, uh, right here. You just drop and drop it there, assign a keyboard, whatever you like. Okay, so first of all, let's take a quick look of some of the problems we may we may face when exporting static meshes from, from 3ds Max to Unreal. And if you're already familiar with the import-export pipeline, just skip forward uh, this section of the video. So this is the simplest case um, we may have, is one Max file, one prop inside, we want to export it. That's that's pretty straightforward. The only thing we need to take into account is that the object has to be centered in the world. Um, if you have it over here, Unreal is going to use the origin coordinates of the world as the pivot point for the mesh. Um, so, anyways, I mean, pretty straightforward. Just just set it to zero zero zero, um, and you're good to go. Just export it, import it in Unreal. That's it. Well, what happens? I mean, this is almost one, never going to be the case, right? You're almost never going to have one object in one max file. Most likely if you're working in an office kit and you have multiple desks, you're gonna have you're gonna want to group them together um, in the same max file. Uh, depending on how large your scene is, you want may group them uh, by style or whatever you prefer. Uh, but have a, it, it's, it's very convenient to have a bunch of them to, to see how they fit, to reuse pieces, stuff like that. Um, so let's see what happens when we start adding multiple uh, objects uh, to the same ma uh, max file. So in this case, we have two of them, right? So the first thing, the first problem that we face is that we, we can just export them like this, uh, otherwise because the pivot point for this guy is gonna be is gonna be set here, so it's gonna be wrong. So you want to select them both, um, oops, sorry, uh, and and center them at zero zero zero, then export them this way, and then you want to undo or save the save your scene before you do this, uh, so that you can put it back where it was and you can keep working. Well, you know, still, not a big deal, um, and there are plenty of uh, scripts out there that will do this for you. It will center, the, center them in the scene, it will reset XForm, it will collapse the modifier stack, export the FBX, and put them back where they were. However, the ones I found, um, they are missing a bunch of functionality, so that's why I went ahead and created mine. Let's see some of, some of, some of the things that, that, some of the problems that we may face. Uh, when working with static meshes, most likely, almost always you're gonna want to have collision as well and um, <clears throat> and in some situations in most situations uh, depending on the game you're working on LODs so let's see what happens when we start adding layers of complexity on top of this um, I created some basic collision for it this is all wrong so is this for the purpose of this video so in this case <clears throat> I went ahead and created a basic box collision for this guy uh, so things we need to take into account. Well, it has to be named in a certain way. Um, so for box collision is uvx underscore and the name of the object, which I don't remember. So I need to go here, copy it, um, come here and paste it. This is for the most basic case, just one single collision. Um, another thing you need to take into account is that, let's say this guy was positioned over here and we want to export it. Uh, so we want to center it in the wall. So if we do it, if we do that now, Look what happens. So the pivot point of the collision has to be aligned with the pivot point of the static mesh, so that we, when we center them, they are they are at the same position. Uh, so we have to do that basically. Take this guy, take the pivot point, uh, and align it to this guy. Yes. Okay. And then we can go ahead and do that. Center it uh, in the wall. Zero zero zero, and then we're good to go. Okay. Um, what about when we have another very typical situation you're going to be uh, facing, which is you have a prop, 
um, and you want to have multiple primitives for the collision. Well, same thing, right? You're gonna have to take all these guys, basically all these collision objects, you're gonna have to center the pivot point to the static mesh and then center everything in the wall. I mean, you get the point, right? I mean, it starts getting more complicated and more complicated. And what, what about when you add um, uh, LODs? Um, LODs work in a, in a specific way. You have to, they have to all be in the same position. You have to group them together and you have to apply the uh, level of detail, um, a, ne a new level of detail set to them. Uh, you can see them all at the same time uh, which is problematic because ideally when you're working with LODs you want to see them all at the same time to see the delta between uh, one and the other uh, stuff is not it's not very convenient so let's see uh, let's see the tool that I made and the functionality that, that it offers and and how we remove it removes some of the hustle of, of working with static meshes for you so let's open it up and see what it does there we go so the script is based around the concept of export nodes um, let's create one and we'll explain what that is. So you click the create node button and it's going to create a dummy for you, what, 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 what it looks like a dummy, but it has some custom properties set under the hood. Um, so you create an export dummy, an export node, sorry, um, you position it, you select your meshes, and you basically, you just pardon them to this export node. So the way to see it is every export node in the scene is going to be an FBX file. And the objects that are linked to this export node are going to be the contents of the FBX file. The name of the export node will be the, the name of the FBX file, of course. So when you create that, when you create an export node and you link the meshes, you will see that there is a list here of all the export nodes in the scene. When you double click in the export node, you can see the contents. So basically, um, they, are, they, are, they are shown in a hierarchical uh, fashion. So the first thing you're going to see is the visual meshes. And if you double click on the visual mesh, you'll see the collision meshes that belong to that visual mesh. And if there were any LODs, you would see them here as well. So what the script is doing is, is doing already naming convention checks. So if it doesn't show up here, there is something wrong with it. And therefore, it wouldn't show up in a real. So we're doing all the checks beforehand to save you some trouble. Another benefit that you get by working this way is that, let's say, this case that we saw before, where we had a static mesh and three collision meshes. And we mentioned that uh, to export this correctly, we have to center everything at 0, 0, 0. But if we, if we do that, um, all of our pieces are going to be messed up because they have the pivot points at different positions. So we have to select all these guys and make sure that they have the pivot point at the exact same place before we center them. So by using the script, um, you just select your static mesh and you create a node, right? And then you create, you select um, all your stuff and you just parent it to the node. So by doing it this way, we don't have to worry about the pivot points of the individual pieces anymore because the script is gonna center the parent, it's gonna center the export node to the world. So when we center this, it's gonna keep all the, the relative transforms um, for you. So it's going to export it like this. So all the pivot points are going to be at 0, 0, 0 automatically, and then it's going to, it's going to put it back there. That's it. So you don't have to worry about the, the pivot points of the, the individual pieces anymore. Next, let's, let's talk about the, uh, the settings section. So every export node and every piece, every visual measure, every collision inside of the export node can have uh, individual settings. So basically, some of the settings are available only to export nodes, and some of the settings are available only to visual and collision meshes. So let's see that. Let's see what the settings are. So for export nodes, um, the only setting that we have basically is this one: is um, center to world. This is the only one that is exclusive to uh, to export nodes, and and it does what what it says basically. Do you, if you enable it um, before exporting, it's going to center it at zero zero zero, uh, and if you disable it, it's just going to leave it there and export all the contents from here. So let's go one level down to this guy and take a look at the options for visual meshes and collision meshes. So as you can see, center to world is disabled because it's, it's only available for export nodes. Um, but on the other hand, let's go, let's go, let's see this guy. It's going to be a better example. Uh, on the other hand, you get now uh, use parent settings and center to parent. Um, what center to parent means is that, so when you export, it's going to take this guy 
and as long as you have the uh, center to world enabled, it's going to take this guy, it's going to set it at 0, 0, 0. Okay? So for the individual pieces, for, uh, like for, the, for the collision meshes, for instance, if center to parent is disabled, it's just going to leave them um, where they are, and that's it. However, if center to parent is enabled, after it centers it to the world, it's going to take this guy and it's going to align it to the parent. So it's going to export it from there because the pivot point is set there. Um, why would you want to do that? Well, let's say we had drawers in this desk. Um, so ideally, we don't want center to parent for any of these collisions or, or, or this mesh, but for the drawer, ideally, if we want to animate it later in a blueprint, you want the pivot point to be set correctly, and you want you want the drawer to be centered here before you export it, so that when you import it in Unreal, the pivot point is at the right location, and then you can reposition it in your blueprint and you can animate it. What use parent settings does is instead of basically well basically what it says if we take these um, if we take these collisions and we enable use parent settings, you see that it's going to disable this uh, use parent settings. So if we go up to the export node that these guys belong to, to this one, it's going to use whatever we set here. So you can either set it globally for all the objects in the export node, or you can go inside of the objects themselves, um, disable use parent settings, and just enable it or disable it here. So you have global control or per object control. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the FBX presets. So basically, when you install the script, uh, when you unzip it, as we saw before, uh, it's going to create this folder for you. And basically, these are just a few FBX export presets that I created, um, and I'm, I, I package them with the script so that you can use them as well if you want. But if you want to create your own, you just go to export, uh, and uh, export, export as the SBX, whatever. We're not going to save it, so just we just want the dialog to pop up. Here we go. So basically, you can set all your settings here to whatever you want, and you can just edit and save preset. Um, and then you just go find that preset and put it in a folder. So that's what I did. I created a few presets, and I packaged them with the, with the, this, with the script. Um, so when you unzip it, they're going to be here. So basically, you, what, you, what you have to do is you click on this button here, you browse to the folder where your presets are, and you click OK, uh, and they will all show up here. And what this allows you is every time you select um, a node, uh, every time you want to export a node or you want to export all, you can select the preset to use for the export. The export path is obviously where the FBX uh, um, files are going to be saved. So we already covered what export nodes are, um, how to navigate through the hierarchy here in the export nodes uh, panel. Uh, how to set the settings for the export nodes and static meshes and visual meshes and what they do. Um, FBX presets, the export path, and how to export. So next, let's take a look at the, uh, some of the tools that come with the script. These are some very, just very basic tools, nothing fancy really. Um, just things that are handy. So the first, the first two is uh, sphere collision and box collision. Uh, so basically, they will, det they will take the, uh, the bounding box of your object and create a box or a sphere uh, around it name it correctly uh, correctly for uh, for a real engine to recognize it uh, the third one the convex collision this is only going to be enabled if you have the physics plugin installed in 3ds max otherwise this will be disabled by default um, but it's pretty handy as well uh, so i recommend that you install it just go to the nvidia website and register and download it uh, you hit on, you click on convex collision it's going to create a convex for you um, again it's going to name it correctly and it's going to parent it to the export node if the static mesh is, is parented to an export node. The next three, so these are these are not for production, this is just for, for quick prototyping. So auto UV is just going to do an automatic unwrap of your object in whatever channel you specify. So I use this when when prototype when working when when working on a, on a mesh, uh, but it's not the final mesh yet. It's far from final and I want to place it in a level, and I'm baking lighting, and I don't want it to be completely black, so I just throw some automatic UVs at it real quick. So this is what it does. Uh, basically, not for production. Ideally, you want to create your own. This is very low quality. 
but it helps for quick prototyping. Uh, the next one is basically going to copy a UV from whatever channel you specify to whatever channel you specify. And the last one is going to create um, automatic LODs. So again, it's just going to use the uh, Pro Optimize modifier. So ideally, you want to either create them by hand or use something more professional like Stemplegon or something like that. But this is in case you need to see, you need to have uh, UVs, uh, sorry, LODs for whatever purpose and you don't want to spend any time into creating them, you just want the content to be there and that's it, you'll replace it later, you can, you can do it here. Uh, so basically you specify the number of LODs that you want, you click Auto LOD, and it's going to name them correctly already and put them here. Uh, so you get LOD1, and, oops, and LOD2. So one of the things that I haven't talked about is the the workflow for the workflow for working with uh, LODs with the advanced FBX export tool. So as I've said before, uh, traditionally, if you do, if you're doing all this manually, uh, if you're working in LODs, uh, the way to go about it is you have to create all your LODs, uh, have them all at the same position, of course, um, and then you have to select them and group them together and give it a name, and then you have to go when they are a group you have to go to the utilities panel and level of detail and create a new set. Okay, so the problem of the, and then you export it this way and then Unreal recognizes the, the LODs. However, the, the problem of working this way is that you can only see one at a time, right? And it's not, it's not, very, it's not very nice. At the same time, they are grouped together, so if you want to modify them, you have to open the group and take the guy and modify it and close it again. And then, yeah, it, it, it's just very, it's just pretty annoying. So what the script does, let me see if I can, this, if I can undo all this. Uh, let's explode it. All right. So what the script does for you is it, it automates the whole process. So basically what you do is, oops, I think I broke it. Anyways, uh, let's do it with a, with a new object and that's it. Let's create a node for it. Okay, so we have our teapot here. So basically what you can do is you can um, either do an auto LOD, so you have a starting point, or or you can create your LODs and name them correctly. correctly. And as long as they are named correctly, just like, the, like here, they have the name of, so the, the first LOD has a name, and then the second one is the same the same name, underscore LOD1, LOD2, LOD3. So as long as they are named correctly um, and they are showing up here in the script, so this is our visual mesh. If we double click, we have the, uh, the LODs. Uh, so the script, what it will do, you can actually have them like th just like that. Uh, and the script will take all the LODs. It will center them to the main, to the, to the LOD zero, basically. It will group them together and it will create the level of detail stuff for you and export it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about anything. Um, another thing to say, to mention, is that the script is, is not actually doing anything to the geometry you're, you have in your scene. So it's actually duplicating everything, doing all the operations that it needs to do, and then deleting that duplicate. That means that if you have a modifier stack, um, if you have anything set up, you're not going to lose it, because we, the script is not touching your geometry at all. It's just duplicating the whole thing. Um, and it's uh, doing all the stuff with the duplicate. So, so that's a good thing as well. Um, I, think, I think that's it. Uh, there are a few features missing, like the, uh, the, create bo the box collision and the sphere collision doesn't work with, um, with, 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 if you have polygons selected, which is something usually that you want, right? Like for this case, in this case, this visual mesh is just one single object. Um, and I want to create three boxes. So I would like to select, oh, sorry, to select uh, these polygons or these elements and create a box for this one and then go very quickly and create this one and then this one. This is not supported yet. I haven't had time to implement it. I, it will be coming in the next version. So this is it for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, um, I hope you like it. I hope it's useful for you. If you, want, if you see anything wrong, any bug, or you want any feature to be added, just post it in the forums. I'll be more than happy to do it. Uh, thank you very much.